Welcome to the Selectman's meeting of August 22nd. First order is a salute to the flag, which is over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? A motion to approve the agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor. <laughs> um, a motion to approve the minutes of last meeting. I'll make a motion. Yeah, and approved. I second. Right up close. Can you guys hear me? No. No. Really? Eric, is there anything we can do about turning no. that mic up? No. Testing. Testing. Is that better? Is that better? Uh, okay, so a motion to approve the minutes of last meeting was um, made and seconded, and all in favor, that is the meeting of August 15th approved. Um, Department head committee chair updates. We have the road commissioners and bridges. Mr. Winchell has been on vacation for the last week, so uh, we have not been able to discuss bridges or dams. Um, I do have um, an email from Lenkowski that I was hoping to share with you. Um, possibly we can add it after announcement. So he just actually. I, Technology. I can just read it from my phone if that's okay with you. Okay. It gives a little bit of a, um, update as to where the deeds and where that stood so that you can kind of figure out where, if anywhere, you're going next. I know that Mr. Winchell is going to um, schedule the meeting with Ben Foster. Uh, like I said, he's been out of town. So, all right. So, hi, Jennifer. As requested, I have looked into the question of responsibility for maintenance of the bridges which the DOT has designated as canal and row. The question was initially presented to me as a question of ownership, and I was provided with copies of deeds which presumably were thought to shed light on that question. It is certainly possible that the second parcel described in the deed from the state of New Hampshire to the state of Maine could encompass the area where the canal bridge is located but I don't think it's necessary to establish ownership in order to determine where responsibility for maintenance lies. Simply put, whoever is responsible for maintaining the road which runs across the bridge is responsible for the maintaining the bridge unless there is some contract, statute, or ordinance provided to the contrary. I understand that some question has been raised as to whether the bridges or any portion of them may be located in Wakefield or at Milton Mills side of the respective town lines. From what I can determine from Google Maps and Google Earth, both bridges are entirely on the Acton side of the respective town lines, although it's very close, uh, close on the Acton Milton Mills line. The only way to be certain that no part of road bridge is on the Milton Mills side would be to have a surveyor locate the bridge structure relative to the town lines. Uh, I hope the above is of sub some assistance. So that pretty much recaps the conversation that he and I had had last week. I spoke to him today and asked him to kind of sum it up so that you could hear it from him um, because he personally doesn't think that there is any reason to continue digging into the deeds because he he feels the law is clear as far as who maintains the road so that's the land use attorney's opinion okay so we have a road committee meeting tonight and I think what I'd like to do is try to go through some of the notes that um, the committee was meeting and talking about canal especially canal bridge they had quite a bit of dialogue going with New Hampshire so I think I'd like to try to reconnect with somebody in New Hampshire on that. Okay. I'm not sure that either road commissioner is going to be at that meeting. Okay. Um, Mr. Mooney's take on it is it's really kind of out of his area, out of, out of his jurisdiction because they're Mr. Winchell's bridges. Well, maybe the notes will let us know who was doing the contacting with New Hampshire and we'll move forward with that piece. And in the meantime, Dave can connect with Ben Foster for the inspection. Okay. So any direction for me? Excellent. Just ask Dave. <laughs> Just ask Almost. Dave. Uh, you know, um, I don't know how long his vacation is, but maybe if he hasn't heard today. anything in two weeks, we'll, hope, you know, move forward. So we want to know basically if the meeting with Ben Foster on the bridges has been scheduled? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Old business MMA action plan. All right, so we've looked at a couple of dates and I have a proposal for you. Thought we were gonna sneak it in, but um, so September 14th and 15th, and it's a couple of weeks away, but we have, we have to work around planning board and rec, rec meetings. So, I mean, I think that we can do it while the offices are open, you know, yeah. with enough staff. Um, either that Thursday or Friday, we're just gonna invite the rec and we're gonna gut it and put everything in that middle room. I mean, a lot of it's going to be trash. The 14th is a Thursday? 14th is a Thursday. Okay. Or we could do it the 15th. Um, the library closes at what, 2? Yes. We could do it then. So okay. whatever you're... That's really the last thing on there that we need to deal with. Well, why don't we start with finding out when the rec is available? If, if they can do Thursday evening, I think, I'm, you know... Okay. Or Friday afternoon. Find Either out when they're available. And in the meantime, I mean, to be, uh, I'm just going to buy some shelving or some containers, just yep. kind of went in there and eyed what's in there. I mean, a lot of it, some of it's going to be trash, but mm -hmm. we have enough to at least reorganize and make it safe yep. to walk through. I think that'll make him happy. Okay. Maintenance zoning. So last week, code enforcement officer met with, uh, the land use attorney, Mr. Lankowski, and he reviewed all of the properties. Um, they sat down and reviewed all of the properties that what we're calling were in the first round of, of concerns. Uh, there was um, letters mailed to, uh, I don't know if you want the property addresses. I mean, they, they're, mm. they're technically public information, but I can, or you just want to know how many? Just how many. Okay, so... I think most of them are two pages. So nine, maybe ten. So these all went certified to ten property owners in town. Um, basically, it's a, a letter that says the office represents the town of Acton in connection with issuing involve, issues involving enforcement and the town's land use ordinances. Um, it goes on to say that we've inspected the property and these are the issues. Uh, it says in order to avoid further enforcement action, you must take the following steps no later than September 15th. So these were mailed out. Uh, the attorney did kick back four, four or five properties um, in which he didn't feel like it w they were at a point where he needed to step in. So tomorrow being Wednesday, um, Ken's going to be working on mailing letters to those four or five people as well and hopefully get some uh, responses to these. Okay. Sounds good. Motor vehicle checks. Uh, since last week, I've received one more. Okay. So slow trickle. <laughs> I say that's a safe comment. Deputy vehicle. <laughs> so uh, the sheriff's office hasn't blocked my number yet. Um, so I sent a, I sent another email to Major Mitchell, you know, asking, thanking him for the voicemail and asking. I guess I was trying to find out why I thought the bid was being awarded to a company that couldn't come up with a car. Why would they get the bid in the first place? You right. Know what I mean? Yeah. So, hello, Jennifer. The bid was only awarded for the cost. It's known that most dealers don't stock white police vehicles on their lots, which require them time to find them. The current delay is a result of the time of year when they phase out one model year and begin assembling of the new model year. Hope this helps. So I replied, appreciate the update. What can I tell my townspeople? <laughs> I didn't hear back <laughs> from him. So it's, uh, they're looking for it, is what okay. I'm understanding. And the company that got the bid is trying to find the car. Thank you. Fire department audit. Energy audit? Energy audit, yes. Um, I spoke to Michael at um, Down East today. Down East, by the way, was very uh, happy and thankful that they received the bid again. And um, we're going to have an audit. I believe it's going to be on the 29th of August. Uh, we're still working out a time. I'm going to go over and meet the fire chief, and the three of us will go through the building and uh, okay. take notes on their recommendations. So I'll set that up with uh, Steve and give you an update afterwards. Okay. Meeting room walkway. I think we are waiting for the doors to be installed first, which I have later under new business. Uh, Portland Glass is putting the new doors to match the library on 
the September 29th and September 30th. Mm -hmm. So the idea is for those doors to be replaced first, and then the walkway will start. September or August? August, sorry. August, August 29th and 30th. Okay. Hunting on Goat Hill. I uh, just got off the phone with Attorney Morn from Burke and Clegg. Um, long story short, no. He says that without an ordinance, he doesn't recommend that you post any type of no hunting. Um, he says it really needs to be, you know, it's a, it's a, a town-owned property. It's a, especially after everything the town's been through and they appropriated the money and the grant. Um, he really would recommend if you want to limit hunting or limit uh, firearms in certain areas that you go through an ordinance. Um, you, you know, if you really felt or had concerns, you could post it for this hunting season and it would take, you know, the season would, would be gone by the time we sorted it all out. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and that's not the answer or the direction that he's, he's leading, leading you to, but he understands the concerns with the orchard be around, being around it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're also hoping that maybe just good choices people won't ask to hunt up there, but it's town property. So technically they don't have to ask either. So. Uh okay okay sounds like a, a busy special town meeting yeah i was just gonna ask <laughs> you if we could think about making a list and think we'll put that under a uh, new business and see what you want to do about that okay gps conservation committee so the town of acton does not have a gps in its possession as i uh, told lois last week sorry correction <laughs> wow it used to be cemetery my mistake well would the conservation committee need it for anything no i mean it would be town owned and they would be able to use it yeah. but if if the cemetery commission uh, the cemetery committee pays for it out of their own budget then it's going to be the property of the cemetery oh. and the town of acton so if for some reason um somebody on the cemetery committee was no longer on that they'd pass it off or pass it back to the town um so not taking a lot of time to look into to your budget um, i printed off three or four different ones some are better at walking and showing longitude and latitude than others so what i would recommend um, if it's something they want to purchase that they take a look at some of the places and put the check request through and let it go through the process like any other item but we don't have one i should say can we have copies of that until you can um, have this this is from staples just three that i printed off that thought might work for you I don't read these. I can't. Those are three same. generic that I just chose, so there's nothing special about those. All right. Thanks. Marijuana survey. I Marijuana survey. So we're having this public hearing on August 29th um, at 6 o'clock. We have, um, and there's been, you know, a little bit of, uh, I shouldn't say a little, there's getting, I'm getting a lot of calls about it. Um, and so I thought, I think I sent you guys an email. I thought, one of the best things to do since since we're so early in the process we're late but we're early um i am in the process of getting gathering information from the state to find out exactly when in february they're going to have their guidelines um you know getting advice about moratoriums versus ordinances um you know i've con continued to say even though you know it's it's not my opinion that matters that i think that it's important for the selectmen to look at the fact that question one passed in acton so we need to really look at those question one voters and, and figure out what they wanted or what they had in mind so before we just fill the room next tuesday with public hearing you know what if we put together some type of survey you know listing out the five different things that are possible right whether they be dispensaries or retail shops or just plants in the backyard or whatever the five different ones were and mm -hmm. and see what people you know maybe those people that supported question one were more you know thinking a couple of plants in the backyard everybody's happy and they you know really might not be in favor of a full dispensary if they knew right. what it was um so i was hoping to get some input from you on what i could throw well, together there was, even though, I just was looking at some information I got from the 12 town group meeting, and all but two towns in the York County passed, or voted yes, um, the two towns that voted no, Alfred and York, there are several towns that voted yes and passed the moratorium or passed the ban, or, right, well, know, so I, I think when they said yes, they meant just a just a little <laughs> <laughs> and that's i mean and i did so. i actually i checked with shapley the town that i live in because i know that they um they voted on a an ordinance right away mm -hmm. and um 
you know, when I asked her the specifics of it, and that's essentially what they did. I mean, they are allowing, you know, A, B, and C. They just don't want to see the town turn into a full dispensary and, right. and grow production. Uh, why don't we put it on the November ballot as a, and ask everybody then? That's the, the most people you're going to get at one time. Well, so You can list your, your suggestions and people can pick whatever they want. I think it will be your broadest spectrum. Mm -hmm. I think what so mon so next Tuesday is going to be more of an informational. We don't have anything to propose as an ordinance to be passed. Yeah, it's more of a informational. We, yeah. yeah. And just to kind of answer her, if you're going to do something for November, um, I actually just yesterday was the deadline to tell the state that we ha did not have a local election. Uh -huh. Doesn't mean that it can't happen based on the, but we'll be hand counting and it'll have to happen differently. So just oh. keep that in mind if you want to. Yeah, in relation to that, you were talking about information. I, I, I took the opportunity to download what OPLA is working on with the legislature, our Office of Policy Legal Analysis for, the, for Augusta. And I wanted to give you the information that I, and it's just information. I'm not loading the deck here. I just I, wanted, I, this is what they're working on. I take information. Yes. Okay, That's great. Serious. Thank you. <laughs> Should I leave one for? Yep. Okay. Yes. We'll get it to him. Definitely. This is everything up. This is an August 15th meeting mostly. And okay. August Thank you. 15th. But there's stuff in there that, that pertains to the towns that might be of help with you guys as far as. Did you state your name? Oh, uh, my name is Mike McCraw. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Susan Mann. Uh, in regards to next week's meeting, I was thinking about posting something on What's Up Acton. to mention that the public hearing is on Tuesday, August 29th at 6 p.m. to hear from the public on the transition into legal marijuana marketplace to review the marijuana laws and how they'll affect Acton. A wide range of questions including how to best to regulate growers, producers, and sellers, how to tax, the amount of tax to be collected, and how to set standards as well as zoning. That was pretty much it, but I didn't want to be stepping on toes. Well, I mean, you you can post as an individual whatever you know whatever you whatever right, you'd like but I didn't to post. Want to post something that if, was I mean, accurate. If you're, I mean, if you were asking me if I was posting it from me, I would simply post that there was a public hearing on Tuesday, August 29th, 6 p.m. You know, um, as the board is trying to gather more information, limiting them to two minutes to speak. I, I guess I don't. When I read the last sentence, a great opportunity for Acton to expand our tax base, bringing tax revenue. That's kind of. I'm not saying that I de agree or disagree. My job. I'm just looking at what you wrote. Right. That kind of that takes that you know what I mean that weight and you know what I mean because we're pushing them one way that's I, true. I, and that's and I'm not saying I disagree with you because remember I don't live in act in my opinion doesn't matter I agree it, I, I'd rather not push I'd, I mean that it's more of a I want it to be unbiased I want to hear Susan, both sides that's your and sorry <laughs> that's your right as a member of that page and as a, you know what I mean I'm gonna post at some point just the public hearing like I do all of the public hearings but there's nothing wrong with this nope. if that's your opinion and that's how you want to post it Right. It's just it's not on behalf of the say anything. It's not on behalf of the town. It's on the okay. on behalf of you. Yep. So there's nothing, you know. Right. So long as nothing is I just don't know that we're gonna get all those questions answered too, so I would be careful. But it's <laughs> nice to plant those seeds yep. so right. that people start thinking yep. in those terms because yep. there are a lot of things plant those issues seeds for people to a, look at. It's not just can you have a couple of plants in your bag. Right, no, no, right. It's, There's I mean, it's, a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. if somebody were to open up a store, uh, can they open it anywhere? Or do we have to now bring in zoning? Right. Yeah, there's so much work ahead of us. Right. Right. Uh, which would, yeah, which would bring up the question, should we put a moratorium on until we work out those details? Right. right. With, the, with the planning board. So, yeah, we're hoping to get a lot of answers um, right. next so week and I, I guess I was trying to plant the seed also yeah. of you're fine. all the different issues that, yeah, like you're that, that go behind this. Yeah, I told the board earlier in an email because I, somehow it came up whether or not it was uh, listed. It wasn't listed as a, um, I didn't put it in the smart shopper. It, because, I mean, there are certain things, certain um, 
hearings and certain meetings that have to be posted certain ways. I mean, this is the very first step and it's just informational. So if we didn't have an informational meeting on, you know, maybe the road committee turning into an ad hoc committee and I didn't advertise that in the smart shop, you know, we didn't do it, try to keep the legal bounds by that. So, but this is, I mean, there's nothing wrong with you posting this. All right. Just okay. don't let anybody Thank tag you. me in it for questions or comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to the survey. Do you want me to take that five and we can, we can I'll just kind of play with it, trying to draft something up and via email we can look at it? Yes. Because it's, it's nothing that no. sets, it's not going to set anything in stone. It's just going to get. No, but those I just want to know what people wanted. That, you know, they're allowing us to do. Right. So. And if we give them charts, that it'll be easier to uh, record that data into an Excel sheet or something if we have numbers rather than just opinions. I'm wondering if it should be three instead of five. Three, what do you mean? Yes, undecided or no, or yeah, I mean, agree. I just think three. Well, we can discuss it okay. in the email. Let me. It'll. Let but me will see you I have can... somebody here to answer questions? As well, far I thought as... that you had decided that the. Per I thought you and I could have been wrong that we were just gathering the information okay. first. Yep, that's fine. Um. Yeah. Okay. So I'll work on it and send you something. Asking people's opinions, as far as like. You know, had they thought about having a, a social club or a medical testing facility in the town or manufacturing this, this five different, like, subtitles or, right. or whatever you want to call licensing. it. Licensing. Licensing and, and different things like that that you can do. So, Come with your two-minute opinion or question. Um, auditor meeting. So, the... So this was scheduled for September 5th, right? Yep. And I'm not to say that it's not still scheduled. Um, Mr. Gore came in and saw me today. And he, um, I tried to explain to him how I explained, I thought I explained in the, in the email with Dr. Williams, that this was not a result of anything that the Warnham Finance asked for or that the Warnham Finance did. This is a result of all the many, many meetings that we've all attended and we've heard Mr. Gore's concerns about the reserve accounts, how they got funded, how we're spending, how we're this and that. The very long speech that he said at town meeting about the accounts that were being spent a certain way and they shouldn't be. Right, wrong, or otherwise, we wanted to bring in an outside source to answer those questions for him or for the board. Um, because we're told the same things from the auditor that there's nothing wrong and they're, they're created this way. He wants more time. He wants to have his Warren Finance meeting, meeting on the 31st. He wants to, he doesn't want this approached as an individual. He wants this approached as a group and he believes that it's going to take numerous meetings to catch the Warren Finance up. Stop shaking your head in the audience. He can't see you. He wants to have many meetings. I mean, he wants to be able to get, he doesn't feel like that's going to give him enough time to show the Warren and Finance all of the concerns he has with the way the town is being, um, I don't want to say budgeted, but saving. the way that we're expending, saving, capital improvements versus, you know, reserve accounts versus expense accounts. I mean, he just doesn't agree with, and he has a lot of input, but he wants it to be from a consensus of the Warren and Finance so he really wants more time with that committee. And what he's given me his word on is that um, if he goes to the committee and the committee is satisfied with the way that the town audit, you know, audits have happened and, and what they see with the, um, all, everything that we do or that the treasurer side does, then, then he won't pursue it. Oh. Um, but, I mean, but that, he, is he not the only person that asks at town meeting he's he i mean you have to go back to town meetings i mean you know this this past town meeting without getting into it too much i mean you know the the treasurer and and myself i mean we feel like i mean it's the board of selectmen's warrant we we sat down at a meeting with all other department heads and we went line by line through our departments uh, just like everybody else did we explained it we've pulled the videos up we've showed them we've talked about the title changes we've talked about the accounts we did all that in the workshop so when we get to town meeting and these accounts are being questioned you know those are things that I, we feel like the board should or could be able to answer do you know what i mean because mm -hmm. you we want to make sure that you have the resources as selectmen come and go to, to understand that. It's not information that Jennifer and Michelle are giving you. That's information that the auditor is showing you. This is where it comes in. This is where it goes out. These are our checks and balances. This is how it was created. I mean, we have 
balance these accounts, you know, for years to the pennies, you know, it's it's going to be helpful to us as well, to, so that you are you have the information, so that you can answer these questions. Yep. I mean, if if you have an attorney and an auditor telling you that a reserve account can be set up this way, here's a town meeting warrant. It doesn't mean that there's not three ways to get to the foot of the lake. Just because you drive down 109 and I go down Goose Pond Road and down and around, doesn't mean that anybody's wrong. And that's where we are with Mr. Gore. He's got a lot of valid points, and I told him that today. But. We just, we have to get past this constant conversation at every single meeting. And this was the way that we thought we would answer that. Okay. But again, he's, he, I told him I was officially ask you for more time. So that's what I'm doing. So they're meeting on the 31st and he thinks it's going to take more than one meeting. We'll yes, just say two. More. <laughs> just two meetings. I mean, how much information is there to share? He, he has a lot of information. Um, I believe that he just actually emailed. Let me see if I can. Maybe if you want to let these two members speak, I might have something for you. Roland Waterhouse. I am on the warrant finance. Um, I don't think we need more time. I disagree with Mr. Gore's need for more time. He has been preaching the same things over and over and over again as far as the reserve accounts, capital improvement accounts, etc. He has given every member of the Warrant Finance Committee all of the information, well I have to assume all of the information that he's dug up in regard to the establishment of reserve accounts for whatever purpose. Um, I don't really see the need to you know, delve further. You know, if the account is a valid account, which the auditor, you know, can establish, Mr. Gore's questions are, who established this account? Was it brought up at a town meeting and did the town vote on it to approve this account? Those are Mr. Gore's uh, exceptions to these reserve accounts, capital improvement accounts, etc. Okay. Okay. Um, he doesn't feel that they were established properly as far as was this voted on at town meeting? Well, why don't to we establish this account? Wh so why don't we? Yeah, well, these the, an the auditors will give us these answers, but what we'll do is you guys will meet on the 31st. You'll have your discussion. I wasn't we'll give aware that we were discussing uh, is that what they're doing on the 31st? On the 31st there's been no agenda established for our meeting on the 31st Who's my assumption was that this was a perfunctory meeting we have a new warrant finance committee some members returning some new members and we have to establish a chairperson a secretary now if you know if we're going to discuss that the uh, uh, reserve accounts that's fine I don't care I'll okay. beat Mr. Gore down some more. Do you want to give him one more week? I don't think we need another week. I really don't. Because Mr. Gore has been pushing this now for at least eight years. Minimum. Okay. Okay. Why, why don't we just give them one week? <laughs> you guys can meet, have your discussions whether you want to push it further. Like you, Tom said, you guys may not want to discuss it we, further. But either we, way, right, I, I want to be answered by the auditors and have a meeting with the auditors. You, well, Warren Finance is welcome Absolutely. to join. I support that meeting. So I'll, we'll go out okay. the 12th. So, oh, you want me to push it back with the auditor? We'll, we'll go one more week. Okay. Kind of meet in the middle with Tom. I don't think it's going to take two more meetings. Um, so he actually just emailed myself and the, the chair. I don't know, you know, we, uh, and it basically just says, um, so I understand Warren and Finance is to have a meeting on, on August 30th, 31st. Jen informed me about a meeting involving the Warren and Finance and Selectmen and other officers regarding some of the issues I have been raising. She told me there is a proposal to meet in the very near future. I suggested that I did not think Warren and Finance was ready yet for any such meeting. I think the Warren and Finance should have a meeting or two or three uh, so that all members understand these issues and what questions need to be addressed prior to such meeting. We also need to agree on what the issues are. When we have fashioned a consensus concerning the issues, we then and only then will take it to the Board of Selectmen. As I have tried to make clear, I wish to work as a board member and not a soul. And then he is attaching the, um, 
statement, I think, that um, as far as the origination and establishment of all these funds. So, so the other the other thing, you you may you may have one or two opportunities to talk about the accounts with Tom, but at, in the middle of it, you would get the auditor's version of it, and then go back and then say, this, you know, you would have something on both oh, sides to so. You know I, you lost me when you said the middle. So are we? You're moving. You want me to move the auditor to the twelfth? Yeah. Okay. And I just, I mean, I want to make sure that I mean, we're going to bring him in. It's going to cost us money to bring him in, which is not a big deal. But this is not going to be about you know what's the undesignated fund balance. How much money do we collect from revenues on boats? I mean, he's not giving a report on the year-end fiscal books. This is, you know, what I mean, a very specific. I mean, we send him these, these documents from Mr. Gore listing out his concerns. That's what he's there to address. Mm -hmm. I, again, I, I disagree with your decision, you know, to, to back it up to the 12th. Okay. The 5th was absolutely fine. We do, uh, to be honest so with you. So you're, you just told me you didn't think you were going to talk about accounts on the 31st. Well, you know, I mean, we are going to meet on the, on the 31st or 30th, whatever it is. 31st. Okay. We will have that meeting. And if uh, you know reserve accounts are brought up, that's fine. We can talk about them during that time frame. But you know, I don't see the need to push the auditor and selectman and Warren Finance Committee meeting out another week. Okay. It doesn't need to yeah. be. So, will Warren Finance be there on September fifth? I'm going to send an email as soon. I mean, I, I spoke to Mr. Gore today. I mean, M Dr. Williams, who was the chair at the Warren and Finance. I mean, he hasn't technically been reelected, so he's not creating an agenda or sending it out. I mean, he called the meeting because, as I told you before, he wanted to have a meeting prior to the September 5th. So he he scheduled it prior, prior to, to that so okay. that you'd have time to discuss. Have time. Okay. So you have time to discuss, then hear the auditors, and then if you need to go back, you go back. It's, it's your decision if you want to push the auditor out to the 12th. We'll stick you know, with the 5th. That's fifth. your stick choice. Yeah. But I don't really feel it's necessary. Okay. And to answer your question, Jen, yeah, there is more concern on those than what you, what you guys are thinking, too. You said if there's more people, more concern. Yeah, there's a few of us that have questions. Like, I, I guess a good for instance is you got a reserve account. How much extra can you put in that reserve account to take away from taxpayer? Can it be a third? Can it be a... But have uh, those questions been asked about to the treasurer? I'm not 100% certain because you've got to remember See, and, where I'm coming from. Well, I'm right, and, and that's why, and that's, I mean, I guess, and that's the other thing. I mean, when I tell, you know, not, I mean, the auditor, just like an attorney, is going right. to be paid, uh, you know, a high amount of money to come down here, and I'm not saying that, that you shouldn't spend it. I, I'm not saying that, but but if he's, if you start asking him questions that your treasurer can answer, <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's a difference well, there. Well, this is why I'm thinking if we get together and they decide they want to talk about this on the 31st, I think that should be one of the questions that should automatically, when we get done that night or that next day or however it's going to work, goes right to whoever it needs to go to, whether it's you or Michelle. Well, it comes to me to and we'll, to. yep. And then you guys look that over real quick and decide whether that's going to be enough time to get the answers we want and be direct, because like you said, money's time is money, money's time. Right. And, and that we will know if we, we might have to push him out or bring him forward, whatever way works. I don't want to spend a lot of time yeah, on that. Right, either. it's the legality yeah. part about how they were established. Exactly. That was the biggest of concerns. I mean, if you have questions about how much can be put into it, those are questions that That's we can it. answer with everyday budgeting. My, my concern is like anything else, and, and even my own budget. You know, how much can I actually keep or have, and how much can I actually roll over? And we can answer those questions for you without the auditor. That's what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. So something like that could be simply answered, and that's what I was just going to say. If it's simply answered, then we might be able to work little differently and September 5th that will be televised yes yes new business open Goat Hill paving bids all right so we received three um, just to I'll help you out. just to um, reiterate so the town of Acton is currently accepting sealed bids for a 60 by 60 parking lot project to be located on Goat Hill project must include clearing of all trees and stumps trucking in 200 yards of gravel private individual to donate purchasing an installation of the 30-foot culvert and a 15 by 24 paved apron from the street um, the rest are just formalities so you, as you open these I have spoken to a couple of different people um, apparently the width or the thickness of the pavement could be adjusted so don't be surprised if you come across one or two that have different prices based on different thickness 
Okay, so this is MJR construction of Limerick, Maine. And JR? MJR. MJR. <coughs> Landscape and construction. I'm not sure if I'm going to know how to read this correctly, but. One number is all supposed to be. Um, oh, this is their insurance. That's their. Do you this see a number on here? <laughs> it's not on here. Nope. There's well, we nothing have, on we, here. We their, I'm uh, like $2 million. Dollars. And that's Can it. I see it? Okay, so. <laughs> the. Um, I got probably three different emails. I think I told you this. I got three emails from three different companies with bids on them. In every case, and I'd have to compare my notes, in every case I replied to the email saying, attach, please review the bid. It needs to be sealed. Please feel free to resubmit. And I just, I think I trashed the emails because I didn't want to know what the numbers were. So, um, I mean, you're... <laughs> it's nothing there. You know what? I mean, what I would do, honestly, because we haven't opened any other bid, I'm going to just um, take two seconds to call them. I mean, they've, they've spelled out the description. For whatever reason, they forgot the number. We can't open the other ones. Okay. And then, you know what I mean? Okay. So I, I don't know how else you're going to do it because, you know, the, they well, either you, have one and inadvertently forgot to <laughs> put it in there or... They, well, well, we have nothing to compare it to if there's only two We bids. have two other ones. Oh, two other ones. It's just I mean, I'm going to... Just to let you know that the town of Acton has received a $1,139 dividend check from the Maine Municipal Association as a result of its good loss experience and loss prevention program. So well done, employees of Acton. Hi there. This is Jennifer Root calling from the town of Acton. Good. So you submitted a, a bid for the um, parking lot bid. Yep. Do you have it in front of you? Yep, no, I've just got to, I'm going to just sum it up for you. I don't, I mean, I don't, much as I appreciate that information, I don't need it. Um, just a quick question. Do you have a copy of the bid in front of you? Okay. So you've listed out the, you've listed out the work description um, and you've attached the insurance, but there's no figure in this bid. That's correct. The road committee meets right after this at 6 p.m. Go through the announcements. So. <laughs> All right. Nope, that's fine. The board is... We're actually Senator Collins will be here tomorrow from at 10 a.m. to answer any questions you have. <laughs> okay. A second ago, you said you didn't know it, but you're sure that's the number you want to submit. Okay. Very good. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Okay, MJR construction twenty one thousand. Can I have that one back, please? Uh, solid, solid ground of Gorham. It's got a nice little description here. What's the bottom line? Uh, 16,920. One of them. What I is think. the two different? Yeah, there's got, that one may have two different prices based Six. on the type, the thickness. Of okay. The so if three inches of hot top is required with two inches of 19.5, what does that say? And one inch of 12.5 millimeters. What are the numbers? 16,380 and 16,920. So what do you see? 380 so was with more. 3 inches. No, 3 inches would be 16,920. And the 16,380 was with 2 inches? 2 and a half. 2 and a half, I see it now. that should I've read more I was assuming it was all the same standards okay so skid steer services of Naples Maine 
8,750. Remove all trees, stumps. That can't be for the whole project. I know. Those are the insurance and liability. What did they forget here? From 60 by 60 designated area, trees will be chipped and piled for use on walking trails, level area to make room for parking lot, trucking, gravel, materials onto site, materials donated by private individual. Install 40 by 12 culvert, 40 by 12 inch culvert when trucking is finished. Install 15 by 24 by 2 inch thick pavement pad at town road edge. So if that must be the because the materials are donated. Let's see. All right, so we know this one is over twenty-one thousand months. All right. That's it yeah. said. Ah, that's what it sounds like a gravel. Which is the in town. the um, so it says install the forty by um, forty. Forty by twelve. It's not the same size culvert as the um, bid requested. Um, when truck has been installed, a 15 by 24, 15 by 20 paved apron from the street. I think pavement paid a ton of it. So I, I know that um, they want to start this sooner than later, but I, you know, I, I've got to be able, obviously we need to check references um, and I need to make sure that this is complete because it seems low based on the like, other two. Is Does it say they're going to pave it or gravel it? It says install a 15 by 24 which is what the thick pavement pad at town road edge just at the edge it says 15 by 4 paved apron from street so you're just going to get a strip when you drive in and the over the culvert there. and then the rest is gravel uh i mean they're in naples it's so that was what two inches so two inches sixteen thousand three eighty. i mean it's 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 twice the amount. There's got to be a reason. Something's got to be missing. Like, you know what I mean? I, we see bids all the time, and they're within a few thousand dollars. But I mean, if it's twice the amount, Steve Johnson, Gore, Maine. Uh, I represent Solid Ground. Um, I think you'll find the reason with the discrepancy is because the town didn't spend money on engineering to get an exact plan designed so that everybody's comparing apples and apples. Um, there was a apron, 15 by 24 apron to be paved. Uh, the rest of it is going to be a gravel uh, parking area. I would assume uh, the, the figures figure out to be about 80, 18 inches of gravel. Uh, you could do that in two ways, 12 and 6 or 15 and 3. Typically the 15 and 3 would be the way to go. There was no standard on the culvert. It just said 30 feet of culvert. Um, being on that hill down there, uh, I think a 12 inch would be small. And then with leather numbers, uh, there's no, no restoration type uh, figure for everybody to compare. And when I said from the back that that would be, my price includes a drainage swale around there, uh, stone riprap with a plunge pool, go, or not plunge pool, well, a little plunge pool, I guess, so going are, into the culvert. So, so you those are things that the, the town didn't ask for, but are you saying would be? They didn't. And but they would be required? Uh, See, that's from an engineering thing. standpoint, I mean, you might get backyard Bobby to go in there for $8,000. You might get your 60 by 60 pad, but is it going to drop off it? You know what I mean? What are you going to be stepping out onto when you come out off from this? Uh, to have that on that hill, pick up all that water and stuff, you'd want a drainage swale around there. Um, so with your approval, um, I'd give you a riprap check dam down the low point, obviously the stuff that like it would be drawn on paper from an engineer's standpoint, but there was no stamp on any set plan. Right. No, so they, and that's pretty hard to compare apples and apples. Yeah. Either. Right. But and in, in, in your defense, I mean, you added things on there that you didn't, you know what I mean? That they didn't ask well, for, I, because I understand yeah. why I'm not saying that 
let me meet with the road commissioner. We'll take the take the names out of it, um, and just in 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 uh, Carl Davis and Ken Paul, and just try to put it together and figure out because you know, I be mean we don't have to go with the lowest bid. It's not about that. We want I want quality that's not going to need read right. be redone after so the if rainstorm you, uh, next I, year. I know that I've been <laughs> against that guy a few times. Ish. We don't talk about that. Yeah, um, be, so <laughs> I'm not looking to come down here and retire. I'm, you know what I mean. I'm, I don't know how to, yeah. To I want somebody that knows family. what they're reading. We'll table it until next week, and I'll get you some information. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I may even bring the guys in and let them speak. Down here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> let me bring them in and have them speak to them as well. I mean, I appreciate him putting extra things in, but you, you know what I mean? If, if the bid says only do A, B, and C, then you're going to be high if you add D, E, and F. Who came up with the list? Carl Davis came up with a list. Okay, so. Not me. Okay. Yes, he sat down and made the list specifically based on what he thought was necessary. Okay. And if anything, he should have put a base price in and then said, I also recommend, you know, these things, but. Yeah. All right, and we'll check references because that sounded like we might have a couple calls to make. Okay. Wharton Finance resignation. You can read it. Nice and loud. All right, nice and loud. Can everybody hear me? No. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, but you people can't hear me. You people. Throw it. All right, anyhow, <laughs> August 19th, 2017. To the Board of Selectmen, due to personal reasons, I regret that I am unable to fill my last term as a Warrant and Finance Committee member. Respectfully submitted Tom Cashins. With sadness, I accept his resignation from the Warrant Finance Committee. Does she second it? Do I have to second yeah, this? Yeah, vote. Yeah. Move to make a motion to. All in favor? Thank you, Tom, for the many years you've served on the Warrant Finance Committee. We'll miss having you. Do you need that back? Yes. Thank you. So we have a seat open. No, well, it's no. actually not going to be. Okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Tax commitment. Oh. 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 Time of year. <clears throat> so without going line by line by line, right. unless the, the townspeople certainly want you to, um, as you know, we had a meeting with the full board last week and the treasurer um, and started going through the tax commitment and looking at what the board's options were. Um, there are some troubling numbers that are going to put them in a, a situation that doesn't give them a whole lot of choice in which direction they're going in. Um, the biggest piece of that is the homestead exemption. So homestead exemptions went, are going up to $20,000. And why that matters so much is because it really takes it from one end and puts it on another end. We had $3.6 million worth of new property and updates and assessing. That's how much our valuation went up. But because of the homestead, all but 83000 of that got shifted. So we're only showing a net increase of 83000 our homestead, we had $12,000 that was exempted. Now we have $15 million, uh, 12 million to $15 million. So $3 million more property that is now being exempt because of the Homestead Act. And this comes from legislation in Augusta that, that here, you know, people's cries or concerns that they can't pay their taxes. So they lower or they increase the homestead. So you're paying less if you're a year-round resident. You know, your value from was 100000 now it's only 80000 um, but your homestead's going down, but on the other end, your tax rate's going up because it has to make up for the loss in the exemption. So that's a big piece of it. Um, and then I had given, we gave a lease, the uh, uh, municipal appropriation went up 140,000, school went up about 40,000. Um, and our other big, big thing was, um, other revenues. Although our local revenues like excise, um, agent fees, all of that went up. Last year, the school was in a different place where they were able to move forward $250,000 on top of the 100000 that they generally give us at town meeting. Um, and this year, that was a one-time thing. So they dropped drastically last year because of that extra money. This year, we don't have that revenue. Um, 
the minimum that is recommended that you commit taxes at is eleven dollars and ninety cents and that is a sixty five cents increase that puts in, just so you know the over last year's overlay was sixty eight thousand the overlay is the money the emergency money or money for abatements let's just say you have uh, fires or properties that are assessed wrong our overlay is going to drop down to eighteen thousand so we've cut it everywhere um, I also wanted to mention that we last year's taxes did go down 35 cents and perhaps we shouldn't have done that i don't i don't know just so it wouldn't be so drastic this year but we did go down 35 cents and we were able to do that because of the school giving us an extra um 250,000 from their undesignated fund i think we um took more from ours as well yep. to to drop that rate last year but this year with the homestead and the school not giving as much as they have did last year it's right. just and the school created a policy there. that allows them they generally they, they create a policy that says that if their undesignated fund balance falls between this number and this number they make the recommendation to not you know just like just like the town's undesignated fund you don't want it to fall below a certain amount mm -hmm. um, and they've set a policy and their number fell with it their end balance fell within that so um, they chose to move forward just what was on there and they did move you know money forward they did. at their town meeting it's just they were able to do they, extra last, last year. year they right but and you but you kind of had to drop it last year because you don't want to be because you were sitting on all that extra money on undesignated funds yep. so you had to you know yep if the homestead wouldn't have gone up five thousand dollars per parcel your tax rate wouldn't be going up three yeah 3.5 million is a lot I mean that's a, that's a huge tax. I mean it it sounds good to the people. You know what I mean to a homestead. Oh, my homestead's going up to twenty thousand, but it's just coming on the other end. It's, and it's happening statewide, not just in Acton. So. Um, Does that affect the property No. No. Just the amount that you pay t the taxable net net taxable. No, and the, the municipal. I mean, we, we, you know, we looked at that. I mean, the municipal was up 146,000. I mean, that's not a lot. I mean, that was what do we say? 50,000 for roads, 30,000 for the fire department. I think general government was up 10,000. Transfer station was up 10,000. So there was nothing, you know, no large item. Um, we had the turnout gear, oh, and that only amounted to about 1.195 of the 60 cents. So 65 cents and 0.195 is from the municipal and the rest is from this the homestead loss yeah. and the revenue loss. Yeah, the revenue loss, so. So, so she gave you calculations. I mean, 1190 is the lowest. Um, anything lower, your overlay is gonna go zero and you can't do that because somebody applies for an abatement. And I don't, she gave you a couple of higher numbers. I can't imagine you wanna go any higher than no. that. No. I checked with the assessor and auditor to make sure that they were comfortable with that 18,000 because that's probably the smallest overlay we've ever had or in, in a very long time and they both were they felt like our valuations were still very strong and um, mm -hmm. I mean we have issued less than probably a couple thousand dollars worth of abatements in the last X amount of years so mm -hmm. he thinks that they think it'll be fine so do I have a motion to set the tax commitment at eleven dollars and ninety cents <laughs> I second all in favor okay tax commitment set at eleven dollars and ninety cents snow pusher bid snow pusher <laughs> So the transfer station has an SP8 John Deere snow pusher for sale. It's the Worksite Pro model. So it's for sale, but in all clarity, it's not for sale. <laughs> oh, is this the this is yeah. Attachment? So the, the transfer station had uh, has this this attachment that was purchased with a piece of equipment. It no longer the piece of equipment was traded in, but the attachment was not. So. Unfortunately, so we we emailed Maine Municipal to say, can we trade in this this um, pusher for another one? It was going to be an equal trade through the um, through the dealership. No money exchange, just a flat. And Maine Municipal said, no, you've got to. We have a warrant article that says anything that has a value of more than five hundred dollars has to go out to bid. So 
what we've done, I've spoken to the, the transfer station attend, um, director, and so we're putting this piece out for bid. We know what it's worth. We know what the, the company is going to give us for it or what it's, you know, worth in trade. Obviously, we're not advertising that. If the bids come in lower than that amount, which I'll have something from John Deere on the day, um, then you can award the bid to John Deere and let them trade it in. If it comes in higher, then we take the money, we sell it, we take that money, and we buy the pusher that fits the tractor. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a circle, but we have to follow policy to... So the town of Acton has an SP8 John Deere snow pusher for sale. It is a work site pro model. Said attachment can be viewed in person during regular business hours at the Acton transfer station. Sealed bids can be mailed or hand delivered to the town administrator. Please mark snow pusher. Deadline to bid is 4 p.m. Tuesday, September 5th. Board of Selectmen reserves the right to reject any and all bid. Sounds good. Just remember to seal it. Yes. And seal it. hand and right deliver or mail. <laughs> Uh, sovereignty law. Miss BJ Karen is here. So I gave you guys copies, and I know that we had some emails floating around. Um, you may want to start briefly by explaining what exactly this law is. Okay. I'm BJ Karen, we own a farm here in Acton. Can you speak into the microphone? Sure. Um, and the sovereignty law, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with it, but Governor LePage passed it on June 16, 2017, and it's for local farmers in certain town, in all towns and cities in um, Maine. And it's up to the town if they want to act on it and pass it, or they can not pass it. Um, the sovereignty law is a local food system. It's more of a neighbor and friends in your town. Um, presently, we have to drive four hours to West Garden, Maine, to Weston's Meats to have our meat processed, state inspected, to be able to sell it. We cannot sell it off our farm, not unless it's state inspected. State inspected can be sold only in the state of Maine. Um, it's a four hour trip, round trip, up and back on one day to drop the animals off, and on the second day we have to do the whole trip again to come back with the processed meat. Um, we do sell it locally right now in stores and off our farm, and our beef and pork is done USDA. We travel our animals to Bonstead, New Hampshire, to a USDA, USDA facility, and they're processed there. Um, right now, we would not be able to sell a friend over on the next road a pork chop off our farm or a whole chicken or a turkey. Um, they would have to be state or USDA inspected. So this law was um, put in effect a few years ago. I think it started in 2009 up in northern Maine. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with the Brown case where the gentleman was selling unpasteurized milk from his farm. Um, so they closed the farm down and they came up with this law and it's been up in northern Maine for a while and it's up to the town. So our question is if this is going to be something that the town may want to partake in. Um, I will give you these talks a little bit about it. There isn't much about it, but there's 20 cities and towns in Maine right now that are doing it. And you can have the rest of this. This is an example of an ordinance? Yes. Okay. Um, it's really up to the towns of what their ordinance is going to be in it, because there's a, there's a good part of it and there's a bad part of it. Like right now, we started a small hatchery, small-scale hatchery off our farm right now this year. Um, we sell um, heritage turkey breeds and um, ducks and chickens and stuff like that. So for us to be able to process someone a Thanksgiving turkey, we have to wait two years to get that processed. There's a two-year waiting list right now at Weston Meats. They're the only one in the state of Maine. There's one other one up in West Gardner. They're both in West Gardner. So this year, we can't offer anyone a fresh turkey. Um, our, our, we, what we would like to do is to be able to take that turkey or that chicken to where we go to a custom, bu custom butcher we use two of them. One is Tabry's Homestead in Berwick, and the other one is um, Ken's Custom um, Processing, and I think it's in Arundel, Biddeford. Biddeford. And we bring our chicken there and our turkeys there. So a lot of people, that's where they go. Um, we can sell it live, but these, for you to bring in one, they really don't want that. They'd rather have you bring in you know, 10 or 20, because it's easier for them to process them under one name than a whole bunch of names. Um, uh, can I, I don't want to interrupt, but I just want to make yeah. sure that I'm understanding. So the, um, so when you take it to, we'll use Ken's, because that's who, yeah. the name I know. You're saying he's not USDA? No. 
What about Orens? No. Neither one of them are USDA. No. Nope. And the closest place is USDA is? Chassis. Sanford. So Chassis, Chassis. does. So yes. Chassis is USDA. The only one that's USDA in York only County. Poultry. Right. The only one that does poultry is four hours away from us. Okay. That's and we have to, to do two trips. One to drop yep. it off, Got one it. to pick it up. So and what this so this wait. law allows this law allows the town to enact an ordinance to allow you to sell only in Acton un uh, meat that's not USDA approved. Correct. That's and to what the it people does. that you know. You don't want it to sell to someone that you don't know. If someone drove in from Florida on our farm, I wouldn't sell it to them because I don't know them. You have to have a personal relationship with them. And it's a handshake. It's more like it was in the old days. It's a handshake of, you know, you know where your meat's coming from. I don't know if anyone's up on the local meat that we buy in the grocery store right now, but the um, government took the label off. There is no label of where your meat comes from in your grocery store anymore. Um, we were doing rabbits, and we stopped. We sold out all our rabbits, all our equipment and everything because of the trip, and we wasn't able to sell them out of state. Um, rabbits come in from other countries right now with no food inspection at all. So there is a good size, there is bad size. It's up to the farmer of who they sell it to in this town. They can't sell it out of the town. Like, we wouldn't be able to bring our turkey or chicken that wasn't inspected. If we had it done at a custom butcher or Tabri's, we would not be able to bring it down to the farmer's market to sell it because it's not, it's going against the state law. We also couldn't sell it to Jen because she lives in Shapley. Right, we wouldn't be able to sell it to you because you live in Shapley. And is there anything that says that you have to advertise or post, you know, to, let's just say Elise was driving by a sign that says this meat is not, if the town moved forward, this meat is not USDA certified. Is there anything in the law that says you have to do that? Or, because I'm, I'm thinking that people would assume. Right. So I didn't know if there was the something. Farmer, it would be up to the farmer to tell them. It, it sounds like this law is pretty much thrown up in the air. They passed it. It's up to each town. Right. You could make that ordinance. Right. You could make that ordinance. That's stating that stating right because there's the downside of it is you know then you have a lot of people that will sell their product off their farms such as vegetables as organic and they're not if they're not labor if you have to check if it's not really um okayed by the government that it's organic people are selling organic foods and they're not mm -hmm. they don't know how much it costs it costs a lot of money to become organic um, we could have done the thousand bird exemption, but we decided we met with Ken Paul and we talked to the state um, department of poultry and it wasn't worth it to us. And it wasn't worth it to have, you know, right now we have our manure pile and our animals. We figured that was enough smell in the neighborhood compared to having a poultry processing center there to be able to do the thousand bird permit or the 20,000 bird permit bird permit because there was a lot of le legalities that we needed to go to and it wasn't cost effective for us so that's I know it's a lot it is a lot it's a lot of information um, and obviously it would be an ordinance that would go to the town floor for people to vote on but it to build the ordinance I almost wonder if uh, sort of uh, planning board and it would take a lot more than just Right. I just wanted to throw it out to you guys. We yep. came in, talked to Jen, and yep. she said, you know, and... You said it has its ups and downs. It and has its ups and downs. Like I said, you know, if it's... Um, and to let you know, um, Senator Angus King in Pingree right now is trying to get it passed in Washington, D.C., that you'll be able to sell any meat to the store in, state of, in your state. Um, I, I can, we can bring it to Ken's because he's a custom butcher, and right now they're trying to process, trying to get that passed. Um, and Maine is one of the ones that um, is on the list for the sovereignty law. They're kind of like gung-ho for it um, at this point in mm -hmm. the government. And for us to sell chicken, we have to sell them live. We can't bring them to them. Um, the poultry department in the state of Maine figures that anybody can take a chicken in their car, but a lot of people don't want to see them live. They want to see them like they would, and they get them in the store in a package, which I can't blame them, you know. You see it, you might want to become friends with it. <laughs> So thank you very much, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So is this something that um, you want me to keep on old business? I mean, obviously, we need to update Ed on it. Um, from my position standpoint, I always encourage the board to 
be careful when it comes to special town meetings and ordinances. I mean, special town meetings are generally designed for, you know, emergencies or situations, you know, right. like the fire. I think that we've gotten through the whole fire chief commission thing, so I'm not expecting you're going to do anything with that until next June. Right. Um, I know we've got to make some changes to another ordinance, and you could, you know, plan on putting this forward for June to see what the townspeople think. Um, I, I, but I'm yeah. not sure it's something, unless you want to move forward with a special... Um, well, this fall I already feels so bogged down, I, I, but I do feel like there should be discussion um, before town meeting. So... Not like, but set it up for the town meeting ordinance to be changed then. But I don't feel like this is something somebody's going to write up and then just... Right. I feel like there should be more discussion so on So maybe once we get through the first marijuana public hearing, yes. we can have a public yeah. hearing on this and see what people think. So yes. maybe end of September, October-ish. Uh, Okay. Yes. You can call me as many times as you'd like. How's that? <laughs> Shh, you're not supposed to tell them. I don't want to commit to you call me after a meeting and ask oh, me yeah. if it's come up because if not, honestly, I mean, no, I, I am human. Thank you guys very much. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Hourly rate deputy CEO. Deputy CEO. So our um Deputy Code Enforcement Officer Corey Normand has passed all of his state certifications and Ken would like to um, increase his hourly rate from 20 to 25. Okay, so Corey has passed three of his exams and he'd like to see an increase. Um, with the amount of hours I use him, this should not be my Okay, so they'll have enough money in their budget. That's what it says based on the current amount that he's being used. Wow, three exams. Do you know what they are? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I don't. <laughs> as, lo as long as they've got the money on their line to cover that with the amount of hours that he puts in, I think it's great he's, he's learning more and can do more. Okay. Do we have a motion to... Increase. I move to make a motion to approve it. I second it. All in favor. Maybe ne next time, I don't know, but by budget season <laughs> for those increases. Ma'am. Hazardous waste day. That's just on there too for me to remember to tell you that um, Bob has, he's, uh, I've sent you, uh, I scanned some information to you about a couple of weeks ago just as a, sample um he's just getting ready to schedule it that's more of a, just an fyi we're gonna let him handle it he's got a company that will bring he'll bring in and we'll take care of everything with him and there'll be a lot of advertisements but remember that was one of the budgeted items yes. this year so yep. he is moving forward with it good appointments appointments okay so with the resignation of tom cashin from warren and finance his term expired June of 2018. So the ordinance says that an alternate with the same expiration date gets moved up to the regular seat. So Lois Michoud was an alternate, one year alternate, June of 18. So she's getting moved up to the regular seat. So Lois is now going to be, after this oath, um, a regular member. So now that leaves the alternate position we already had, and now we have essentially a second alternate. Um, I have had two people come forward um, with interest, which worked out well, no offense, Tom, that we didn't have to go through and sit down through them. Uh, one of them we know is Susan um, that mentioned last week, and um, I got another call from Virginia Shea, who um, was sat on a policy committee and when that was first set up, she's also the um, election um, warden in most of the morning election pieces. Um, she's interested in getting more involved and thought that an alternate seat might be a, a good way of doing that. Great. So they're both one-year terms. So with your um, blessing, I'd like to appoint those three. Uh, I also have Bill Catanzi that needs to be appointed for E911 coordinator. And um, I understand from the fire rescue meeting last night that uh, we're moving forward with Mr. Dave Langley and Rick Smith as our continued deputy fire chiefs. Okay. So, right, that's what your committee yes. decided? Yes, yep. I'll do the deputy chiefs first. 
The selectmen of the municipality of Acton do in accordance with the provisions of the laws of the state of Maine hereby appoint Rick Smith and David Langley as deputy fire chief within and for the municipality of Acton until June 30th, 2018. There were one year appointments. Yeah. That's what the ordinance says. Until the ordinance changes. <laughs> so we don't have to do that again. So I'll make a move. Motion to. I'll make a motion. <laughs> or move. That's fine. You can move. Yeah. move. I'm going to move or make a motion. <laughs> you can move to make a motion. I move to make a motion. <laughs> All right. So that Rick Smith and David Langley. Should I need to read this no. over again? I just do deputy fire chief within and for the municipality of Acton until June 30th, 2018. I second. All in favor. Oh, I gotta sign it. And with your permission on that, um, a motion to um, compensate, uh, compensate, compensate those two individuals effective July 1 for that position. Yep. Along with that, what Jen just said. You can sign those. <clears throat> the selectmen of the municipality of Acton do in accordance with the provisions of the laws of the state of Maine uh, hereby appoint B William Catanzi as E91 coordinator within and for the municipality of Acton until June 30th, 2018. And I'll make a motion to have William Catanzi become an E91 coordinator until until june 30th 2018. i second all in favor The selectmen of the municipality of Acton do in accordance with the provisions of the laws of the state of Maine hereby appoint Lois Michaud, Michaud as regular Warrant and Finance Committee member and Virginia Shea and Susan Meehan as alternate Warrant and Finance Committee members. I'll make a motion. All until June 30th, <laughs> 2018. All right, now I'll make a motion to approve Lois Michaud to regular Warrant and Finance Committee member until June 30th, 2018. And then we have Virginia Shea, Alternative Warrant and Finance Committee member, uh, June 30th, 2018. And Susan Meehan to the Alternate Warrant and Finance Committee member until June 30th, 2018. And I second that. They finishing it. Well, one of them, they're when they're it'll I can double check them. I, I have to pull the whole ordinance up in front of me, but so they had to fill out. They can the selectmen can only appoint to the remainder of the original term. So we know that Lois's alternate was June of 18 because she was just elected to that this past June. So we know that one's correct. And the other one came open because we had a resignation. Right, but his, right, and Roland was an alternate through June of 18, so, oops, sorry. So, right, but before town meeting, he was an alternate for June of 18. So at town meeting, he got elected to the regular seat, which left his June of 18 alternate seat open, which leaves me with two alternate June of 18 people. It doesn't usually happen that way, you're right, but the board doesn't, can only appoint to the remainder of the terms. Door installation. Next Tuesday and Wednesday. Public comment. Announcements. I made the first two. Acton Fairs, August 24th through the 27th this weekend. Paving bids. You made the first two? Oh, Senator Collins, I'm sorry, I missed I that. I did, you were on the phone. Okay. What are the paving bids? Paving bids. Um, yeah, what we talked about those last week. For for paving. Oh 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 yep yep. So tell me, I did I did run that by you, didn't I? Yep, you did. Because I ran it by the guys. 
public hearing um, regarding marijuana, we talked about that is next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Warrant and Finance Committee meets August 31st at 6 p.m. Public hearing on September 7th at 7 o'clock for Maloney. Planning Board. Planning Board. Mary Grant Pub Potluck Picnic in the park is a Sunday, September 17th at 1 p.m. That will be the grand opening of the Story Walk as well. The Apple Fest 5K, September 30th at 9 a.m. Is that a two-day event? I feel like it's October 1st as well. <laughs> it's, usually, it's 9 to 3 on that Saturday anyways. No, no, it is not. It's not. Okay. One page. Um, Acton Apple Fest and Family 5K at Apple Valley. Okay. Oh, and Elise, we voted as a staff that you represent all of us in 5K. <laughs> Go team. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Uh, ZBA? Oh, oh ZBA. Zoning Board. The zoning Board of Appeals, Rec and Cemetery Openings. Zoning Board of Appeals, um, and I put that, this plea out there, they really literally only meet once a year, if maybe twice a year, I mean, maybe twice every five years. I think since I've been here, they've had one or two meetings. Um, zoning Board of Appeals is if somebody is denied a permit, um, they have to have the right to go above code enforcement and that's to the zoning board so you would hear out the case and determine um, whether or not there should be changes in the issuance of the permit so uh, right now it's a seven man a seven person committee excuse me um, I think we have four we need a couple of more to get this um, get this scheduled rec it looks like we're gonna be having somebody step down I know I think I just heard about yeah that. Um, so we're not gonna announce it quite yet but they're gonna need some help and then Cemetery, um, Lois is, uh, I think she had somebody, didn't you? You had your armor on somebody earlier that was going to help. Oh, we volunteer for something else. Try him. Okay. So those are the openings that we have, and just forget about K. I don't know. Sometimes I put it Door in Door installation again. <laughs> I couldn't decide That's if I sweet. wanted another announcement, a new business, and these are long agendas. Yeah. I'm tired, at least. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn. I second. All in favor. Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night.